Hey everyone, let me show you how I edited this golden hour scene with a bit of Photoshop and why it makes sense that I block the sun with my finger here. As always, you can find the link to the raw files in the description of the video and now let's begin. So for this image, we will be using two different HDR shots. HDR because we want to have a higher dynamic range because of the deep shadows and the bright highlights. And why are we using two different images? That's simple. Here is our base image with a nicely visible sun star. On the second image, I was covering the sun with my finger. And the reason I'm doing this is to get a clear overall shot. Right now, you don't see much difference between the two images. However, let's edit the base image first and then things will get a little more clear. Let's change the profile to Adobe Landscape first. You can see this will already help with the darkest parts and I'm also going to adjust the white balance. I actually think I want to make it slightly colder. So let's bring down the temperature here. And I do want to introduce some more tint, getting rid of that harsh green color cast this way. This is looking much better. Next, let's work on the exposure. At the moment, the dark parts are a little too overwhelming and I want to change that by bringing up the exposure. Since we're working with an HDR file, we do have a lot of room to play around here. But of course, raising the exposure will also blow out the sky even more. So to fix that, simply bring down the highlights and bring back details from the sky. Still, the dark parts are a little too dark, so I want to change that by bringing up the shadows. And let's also bring up the blacks. Bringing up the blacks will also help create a very soft look. And in my opinion, this works great for golden hour scenes like this. At this point, we can introduce some texture, giving the smallest details some more sharpness. And I guess I want to have an overall soft look. So I'm going to drop the clarity just a tiny bit. And I'm also going to drop the dehaze for that soft effect. Keep in mind, dropping the dehaze will make the image brighter. So just keep an eye on the histogram to not overexpose so badly. However, I think this looks pretty good so far for just doing the basic adjustments. You can see we went from this dark shot to this nicely balanced exposure. I'm quite happy with this. However, I do want to adjust this guy a bit. So let's go into the masking panel. And I want to target only the blue part of the sky without affecting anything else. So I'm going to choose a range mask. To be more precise, I'm choosing a color range mask here. And just click in here. This is doing a pretty good job. I think I don't need to adjust much, but I do want to subtract a radial gradient coming from around the sun. Just to get a more natural fade going from the dark sky to the bright sky at the bottom of the image. So with this radial gradient subtracted, I'm simply going to drop the exposure, making the blue part of the sky just a bit darker. So we went from this to this. Very subtle, but it helps. All right, we're getting closer. Now let's do a bit of color grading. I want to start in the color mixer. Just want to work on the saturation for a moment. I want to bring up the yellow tones and maybe even the green tones and also the blue tones. Perfect. I really don't want to overdo it. So let's keep it simple. Also, I'm going to apply some split toning here. Since we are working with a golden hour scene, I want to work on the highlights and just make them make the golden light a little more golden. So let's set up the hue first, going somewhere right here in the yellow range and bring up the saturation. You could bring it up quite a bit here, but I want to keep it subtle. So let's use a low amount of saturation, just like that. Not going to touch the midtones or the shadows because I think otherwise this shot looks quite good. Finally, I'm heading into the calibration tab where I just want to bring up the saturation some more. And that's it for the color grading in the raw adjustments. I do think I want to add some vignetting. So let's open up the effects tab and just bring down that vignetting slider a notch. Actually, that's way too much. I'm going to raise it back a bit. I think that's a good spot right there. And finally, we can sharpen this image in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and then increase the amount of sharpening. 
By the way, if you can spot some chromatic aberration along the edges, especially at the trees, you want to go into the optics tab and activate remove chromatic aberration. This is really, really helpful for this image. So here we have the edited base image. We went from this to this. Now we need to apply the same settings on the second image. So hold down the shift key and click on the second image thumbnail, right click, choose synchronize settings, make sure to check all and hit OK. Now let's head over to the second image. Take a close look at the shadows in the foreground. Here we have very dark contrast rich shadows. In the image with the Sunstar, you can see how the shadows are way, way softer. Also, we do have a bit of lens flare going on right here in this corner. So by blocking the sun with my finger, I can get a much cleaner image. Now we just need to combine those two images with a bit of Photoshop. So let's select them both and hit open objects. Next up, I'm going to drag this layer to our base image up here. Just place it in here and of course align it with the base image, just like that. This is looking pretty good. If you want to be safe, you can select both layers, go to edit and choose auto align layers. Hit OK. And now we have two perfectly aligned images. Now you want to create a layer mask on the image with the finger. Then grab the brush by pressing B, set the foreground color to black. And now all we need to do is to mask out the finger. At this point, we are losing some sun rays since the upper layer is still covering our base image. You can see it if I deactivate the upper layer. This means we need to further mask out those sun rays. Therefore, I'm just making the brush a little bigger and just brush over the sun once or twice. And just like that, we have a super clean image with a nice sun star in the frame. And deactivating the upper layer, you can see the difference in terms of the clearness. So next up, let's merge everything. I'm hitting Control Shift Alt E for that. And I'm going to right click on that layer and say convert to smart object. I'm doing this because I want to apply the camera raw filter on this layer. So let's go to filter and choose camera raw filter. This will bring us back in the camera raw editor. And what I want to do here is to go back into the calibration tab down here. What I'm going to do here is to bring down the blue primary hue quite a bit. And I'm doing this to change the color of that sun star. So that's before the calibration and that's with the calibration. We could even turn up the saturation a bit. And by doing this, we are giving the sun star more of an orange color tone. Let's hit OK. Of course, I don't want to have this effect co covering the whole image. So I'm making use of a layer mask again. Let's fill that layer mask with black by hitting Ctrl I to invert it. Again, make use of the brush. This time set the foreground color to white and just brush over that sun star. All right, that should be fine. If I deactivate this layer, you can see the difference again. From this to this. Again, a subtle change, but it looks so much better. And finally, I want to clean up this image. So again, let's merge everything by hitting Ctrl Alt Shift E. Choose the spot healing brush. And now I'm just getting rid of a few objects around the image. There's a little bit of lens flare left. Let's see if we can remove that. That's looking pretty good. Okay. And I guess we are done with the editing for this shot. So I hope introducing this finger blocking sun technique was helpful and you might want to use it in your next Sunstar photo shoot. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.